Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling page. Today we're going to do a, a quick um, art journal page, creating colourful chaos in our journals. So this is the last page of my Large Dilutions journal. I think if you check out my channel, I'll put the link to it below too, you'll see the flip through of this journal. But um, I often find on the very last page of my journal, I really like to do, I don't want to say inspirational, but I want I like to do something that sort of gives a bit of hope going into the next journal, you know, it's a bit of a jumping off point if, if that makes sense. And quite often it's just more about me making it really bright, you know, this is a celebration, I finished a journal, I'm about to jump into a new one, you've had fun in this journal, you know, let's, let's celebrate that fact. So that's what I'm doing this page and I'm just using all my favourite colours, I'm using all my favourite marks, I'm just having fun. So I'm starting off, like I do with a lot of my backgrounds, um, just putting paint down on the page. I am probably being a bit more deliberate than I usually am when I'm putting paint down on the page. You'll see I'm actually sort of putting in some circle shapes and some, you know, semicircles. Usually when I'm doing pages like this, I will just put down patches of colour. Um, I'm even blending colours a bit, so putting in some paler colours and blending them together. Um, you know... Just, just put some colour down the page, whatever, whatever you fancy. So I, um, you know, where I had that big bit of blushing down the bottom, that pinky colour, I decided I was going to split it up a little bit and put some more of that marine with the, the white in it. Um, up the top, there's a big chunk of blue, so I decided that, that I would put um, mix a darker blue into it. I'm also adding in some black just to add some contrast onto my page as well, and give me some points on my page that I can put mark making over um, in different colours and it's going to be really really bright and stand out. So to do that I'm using black gesso, you'll see when it dries it's, it's very matte so it's gone from that really shiny when it's wet to being very very matte. Um, so it gives you a beautiful true black colour on the page. So this is looking pretty nothing-ish at the moment but it'll look better when it's finished. So already just putting on some marks, you can see it sort of just starts to sing and this is where you just have fun. So um, I'm just using different paint brushes to make different shapes. So this is just a flat brush and just popping on the page. You'll notice that I'm not sticking inside one shape in particular. So with the black, I made sure it went sort of out over the edges. Um, same with the, the turquoise marks at the top. Um, when I finished that, I decided that I wanted some brighter pink colours on the page, so I'm going in with my magenta and pa painting in some patches. So this is where you can be really deliberate with how you're adding your colour. You know, if you think, oh, it's a bit dull in that spot, let's add another colour to brighten it up, do that. So I'm popping in some yellow circles, some yellow lines, um, making sure to go across two pages to make it look like it's all part of one spot. You do need to be a little bit careful with yellow when you're working on the page. If you want a really solid colour you might need to do two coats. You'll notice um, uh, yellow or bright colours like yellow are a little bit more translucent than some of the other colours. So um, if you want that really really bright pop of yellow maybe pop um, another coat on but I quite liked sort of how you could see some of the colours underneath and the sort of streaky lines. I'm also adding in a little bit of white just to give a little bit of shading onto the page as well and also some uh, I think that must be carnation so on the carnation there what I did was just spread it out a little bit and then I just used a pencil to scribe into it or the end of my I think it was actually the end of my paintbrush um, just to scratch away some of the paint so you get some extra texture and some lines. Once I've finished with my paint brushes then I'm going in with my paint pens. So <clears throat> paint pens are acrylic paint just like I was using before. The only difference by having it in a pen form it's just a little bit easier to control if you want to make finer marks and so on. So I was actually able to make circles in a variety of different shapes more easily than I would have been able to with a paintbrush. I'm also going in with that really hot pink colour um, to brighten up those lines. Hot pink is one of those amazing colours, it just, or neons in particular, um, they just brighten everything up. They're sort of like um, 
a filter over your page. So I, I really enjoy using them. And if you don't have any, even if you just get one in a paint marker, it's just a really handy thing to have around. So once I've finished that, then I'm going in with some different colours and just putting little random dots and lines wherever I feel I fancy it, basically. There's no real rhyme or reason to where I'm putting stuff. I tend to put stuff down in three places on my page. So you'll notice those pink dots, I've got them in three, but I've also got those pink lines too. So, you know, it's good to have a bit of a plan, but if, if you add extra, it's, the world's not going to fall apart either. Um, then I'm going in with some white. Putting in white and black at the end is usually a really good idea to balance it. Um, it gives you some white space. You can see I've sort of sprinkled those marks across the page and it just brightens the whole thing up. So where I, used to, where I started, where it was not necessarily dull, because I did use some bright colours, but certainly now it's just got that richness of um, colour happening in it and it's starting to look a little chaotic, but I, I like that. I'm also taking a picture of my pages because I knew I wanted to put some quotes over it but I really liked how that looked just as is so I wanted to have a picture of that too. And I decided I was just going to hand write on create colourful chaos onto my page and I'm just using my markers to um, widen up the lines. So. Um, I sort of use a mix of the thinner and the thicker marker, using the thinner sort of around the, um, I can't remember what they're called, kerns, I think. I'm not very good at calligraphy, calligraphy so if anyone knows, they can, they can correct me on that one. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, yes, going in and um, widening up, usually the downstrokes, and then um, just making sure it's nice and bold on my page because everything else is so bold in the background so I want the um, quote to stand out as well. So you can take as much or as little time with this and obviously I've chosen black to do this so again I've got that um, really strong contrast but you could choose any colour um, to work on it. I suppose the black for me in where I've placed it I don't have any black underneath it apart from Oh, the S at the end, I think it goes into the black. Um, if I'd had the white, I would have lost the effects of those dots over the, um, the top. So just, you know, think about what's going to work best on your page. When I finished doing this, which, you know, it's watching paint dry, isn't it, really? Um, I'm going to go back and put some highlights around my letters just to pop them out a little bit. So you can see just by putting that little bit of white on, it just adds something extra to the, to the letters. It makes them not look as flat on the page as well. It pushes them out from the background. So you've got a little bit of interest on your page. And again, it's a good way to, you know, if you've got colours that have blended in to the background, for example, you can just push them forward a little bit. So particularly on the S, you'll probably see that um, happen. There you go. So you sort of see the tail of the S sort of sticking out a little bit. So this is a close-up of the pages without the writing on it. And to be honest, if I wanted to frame a piece of art, I would be very happy to have that sitting on my wall just as is. Um, but, you know, it's me. I like to have messages in my art journal, so I did write the quote over the top as well. But I really, really like the just without the writing on it. And then I've got my Colour for Chaos. So I've got a really lovely send-off in my large dilution journal to jump into my next one, which I've got two lining up because, you know, I never have enough journals on the go at once. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Until next time, bye for now.